Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. I congratulate you that you are here. I'm telling you, every chain will be broken, all the fetters will be broken. Anything that tied you down, call it Satan, call it sickness, call it evil spirit, call it a yo, call it a bondage. Anything that ties you down, there is a glorious escape for everyone today. There's a power coming from Calvary. There's a power coming from the throne. And that power coming from Calvary from the throne will touch you. You'll never be the same again in Jesus' name. And when you escape, you're not escaping to a wilderness, a place where you're going to hide your head. You're escaping to the mountaintop. Because I'm telling you that every poverty is cancelled. Sicknesses are cancelled. All the infirmities and the works of the devil of the flesh, they're cancelled in Jesus' name. Why don't you just thank God because you have escaped already. And say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. I have escaped. I have escaped. I have escaped. Never, never, never to be in bondage anymore. Never, never. Bondage to sickness. Bondage to calamity. Bondage to evil spirit. Bondage to any curse. Or bondage to any whatever. I have escaped. I have escaped. I release the blessing of God upon your life today. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we bless your name today. Lord Jesus, who died for us on the cross of Calvary, we bless your name today. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for this glorious escape for everyone. Oh Lord, I pray everyone will be free in Jesus' name. All the mountains before us, I command, get out in Jesus' name. Every sickness, every infirmity, every walk of the devil, I cancel, I destroy everything in Jesus' name. Miracles everywhere. Your power everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. I pray, Lord, that today the joy of the Lord will be the strength of your people in Jesus' name. No lack. No loss. No limitation. No bondage. No attack. No affliction. Nothing to tie anyone down. Oh Lord, I pray as you open the door of escape, everybody will pass through and everybody will go to that release. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Thank you very much. Genesis chapter 19, verse 17. Genesis chapter 19. We're looking at verse 17. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. If you are a student of the Bible, you know the part from which I take that story. It's a story of angels coming to Sodom. Because the cup of iniquity of Sodom was already full. And the Lord decided that judgment was coming upon Sodom. Actually, the Lord, the Heavenly Father, in his mercy, in his compassion, in his love, he had told Abraham his friend. He said, can I do anything without telling my friend Abraham? And so he told him. And Abraham began to pray. Abraham began to intercede for Sodom and Gomorrah. And he said, if you find 50 people there who are righteous, who are following you, who are walking in the way of the Lord, will you not spare them? And he said, if I find 50 righteous people there... I will spare them. 
And then Abraham went to 45, to 40, to 30, to 20, and even to 10. And God eventually said in his promise, a covenant with his friend Abraham, if I find 10 righteous people there, I will spare the land. And then God went his way. Abraham went his way. And two angels then came to Sodom. And then they told Lot what was going to happen. But as Lot went out to tell, all those that were related to him, it appeared he was joking. They didn't believe what he said. Eventually, the angels laid hold on Lot and his wife and the two daughters that were there and said, come out of this place. Escape for your life. Look not behind you. Escape to the mountain top. And then he says, so that you will not be consumed with the sin, with the iniquity of this land. And today, it's your day of escape. Yeah. I told you already, when we escape, we're not escaping into nothingness. There are some people that, you know, they say they get delivered, and they are set free, and they escape. And then I ask them, what are you doing now? After that glorious escape, oh, they said, I just praise the Lord because I've escaped. Look at Isaiah chapter 37. When you escape, and thank God you are going to escape. Then something beautiful, something great must happen in your life. It says in Isaiah chapter 37, I'm reading from verse 30. And there shall be a sign unto thee. Ye shall eat this year such as grows of itself. And the second year that we springeth of the same. And in the third year sow ye and reap and plant vineyards, and eat of the fruit thereof. Verse 31, and the remnant that is escaped, and the remnant that is escaped, and the believing remnant that is escaped, and the favored remnant that is escaped, and the faithful remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear fruit upward. You see, after we escaped, is to escape into fruitfulness and to escape into success and to escape into spiritual growth. And as we escape today, something beautiful will be added to your life in Jesus' name. And then the Lord is saying, we have a part to play. What part do we have to play? I'm looking at Luke chapter 21. Luke chapter 21, our escape demands something from us. Our escape demands a decision from us. You cannot just stay there and fold your hand and not even pray and not even watch and not even make any attempt at all and say, I'm escaping, I'm escaping. You will do something. The angels brought them out and the angels commanded them and the angels instructed them, escape for your life. You have something to do. It's an imperative. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. It's a command. And it says, this is what you do. You must make an effort. You don't want to be a kind of lazy Christian, indolent Christian, a kind of do-nothing Christian. You must be up and doing. You will do what you need to do. In Luke chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 36, then I'll back up to verse 34. Verse 36, so you will know, we're talking about the people that want to escape. Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. It says, when you escape, you do that in order to stand before the Son of Man. It's talking about even the final escape, that is, escaping the great tribulation. 
escaping the great calamity coming upon this world, escaping the reign and the rule of the Antichrist that you are going to escape, you will escape in Jesus' name. In fact, that is the sum total of all escape. It is the father of all escape. It is the mother of all escape. It is the final purpose and the final goal and the final destination of all escape. What if a person escapes sickness now and is not able to escape the Antichrist in the future? He escapes poverty now. He's not able to escape the great tribulation in the future. He escapes all the calamities of the world now. He's not able to escape all the pain and punishment and the evil that will come upon the world at the time of the great tribulation the final escape is what the lord is talking about here that you'll watch and pray that you will not be kind of bogged down with the affairs of this life and then you'll be able to escape and then to stand before the son of man when he comes it will happen in jesus name now i back up to verse 34 it says take heed to yourselves you see that here is the lord jesus christ saying yes i've made a way for you to escape yes i've made a way for you to overcome all the difficulties and all the challenges but then it says you'll take it unto yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness lest at any time any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness lest at any time Let's take the retreat time, for example. There are people that come to the retreat time and you know, their hands are still overcharged. You're suffering and drunkenness. I'm not even talking about, you know, drinking all those intoxicating things, but they drink, they're just to eat and drink, eat and drink, eat and drink. All they want is an easy life and easy accommodation and easy whatever it is. And it says, take it to yourself. Let's, at any time, the only consideration that comes to your mind is, where am I going to have? this and have this and, and you're petting your flesh and you're petting your life and it's really for all the all the creature comforts of the world but it says to take it yourself let's at any time any time and then after the retreat when you go back home that you're not the kind of a pleasure-seeking person the nightclub person the one that is wanting this and wanting that and in fact the world is making it easier and easier and easier every day to go into all these pleasures of the world the internet is there all the you know laptops are there and all those ipads are there and all those uh, games are there and there are some people they don't care for their spiritual lives anymore all they're doing is suffering and drunkenness and then it says and the cares of this life and the cares of this life what are we going to eat what are we going to drink I want to have this, I want to have that, I want to travel out, I want to travel in, I want to, you know, j j just have a nice time, I want to be here and there. The cares of this life, so that, that they come upon you unawares, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Then the conclusion says in verse 36, watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come upon, that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. You will be there. I said you will be there. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Tell me, God is faithful. Tell me out loud, God is faithful. Tell me that again. Is faithful to want to deliver the Lord and the family out of Sodom. Is faithful to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. Is faithful to deliver Elijah out of the hands of Ahab and Jezebel. He is faithful to deliver David out of the hands of the Philistines. Is able to deliver all the disciples from all the all the oppressions and all the paths of darkness of this world. God is faithful. This morning, our God is faithful. In your case, our God is faithful. All the challenges that might be around you, the things that want to tie you down, I want to remind you again, God is faithful. He will deliver Shadak, Meshach, and Abednego from the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. He will deliver Daniel from the lion's den. There will be a way of escape for everybody because God is faithful. Faithful. Look at that again. There's no temptation taking you, 
but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you, allow you, permit you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to do what? A way, tell me out loud. A way, tell me again. A way to escape. A way to escape. But you know, I, I need to tell you this. You know, Paul and Silas were in the prison. The doors were locked. The gates were locked. Iron doors, iron gates. All the windows were locked. And their feet were bound in stalks and chains. And then Paul and Silas began to sing. And when they began to sing, an earthquake took place. The foundation of the prison was shaking. All the doors were open, all the windows were open, and all the chains were loose. God made a way to escape. The only thing is for the people to rise up and escape. But all the people were there until the jailer came back again and locked all the doors and locked all the gates. They cannot blame God. God is faithful. God is faithful. God has opened the door, and I'm saying that God is going to open the gate again. Is going to break loose all those chains. Is going to snap them and destroy them once again. And then at the time when you hear that final amen, you know that the gate is open already. You'll not do like those people and just stay there. And then the sick, you say, I'm still in my sickness. No, you are not in your sickness. I'm still in my calamity. No, you are not in your calamity. He is faithful to make a way of escape. And when he makes that way of escape, you are coming out today. I said you are coming out today. He said, also make a way to escape that she may be able to bear it. I'm going to talk about uh, three things in this uh, message. Our glorious escape. Number one, our glorious escape from Sodom. Our glorious escape from Sodom. Number two, our great escape from sickness. Our great escape from sickness. Number three, our gracious escape from Satan. Escape from Sodom. Escape from sickness. Escape from Satan. And when you've got all that, you got it all, you're free. I said you're free. I said you're free. <laughs> Genesis chapter 19, once again, our glorious escape from Sodom. Our glorious escape from Sodom. Our glorious escape from Sodom. Before I read Genesis chapter 19, can you back up to Genesis chapter 13? There's a place a child of God must never be. There are situations a child of God must never get into. There are companies a child of God must never keep. You see, Lord did not know the future. There was a kind of little disagreement. You know, sometimes little disagreement can catapult you into Sodom if you are not watchful. Little disagreement can just, you know, separate you from Abraham, the friend of God. And there was this, uh, you know, kind of misunderstanding between the herdsmen of Lot and the herdsmen of Abraham. And Abraham called Lot and said, it's not right because we are brethren for us to strive or to fight or to argue about anything. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right. Choose whichever you want. That was the time Lot made a wrong decision. It was that that got him to Sodom. He took his wife. He took all his children. He took all his servants. He took all his sons, he took everything he possessed, and then he went to Sodom. I pray God will deliver you from a wrong decision. And then look at it now in Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. I'm reading here from verse 10. And Lord lifted up his eyes and, be, and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even as a garden of the Lord. Then he says, like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zohar. Then Lord chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lord journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. And Abraham dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lord dwelt in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. 
But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. That's the choice he made. That's the direction in which he went. That's the place he went to live. He took all his servants there. But you know, even though he escaped, all his servants burnt up in Sodom. Even though he escaped, all the herds, they were even quarreling, they were even discussing about or striving about. All those herds were burnt up in Sodom. And all the people that went away said, Lord, he to Sodom. You see the loss, you see the loss, just because he took that wrong decision. They all burnt up in Sodom. Even his wife became a pillar of salt. You know the story. But you will not be like that. I said, you will not be like that. Now, Genesis chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 19, verse 1. It says in verse 1, Genesis chapter 19, And there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lord sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lord seeing them rose up to meet them. And he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold, now my Lord, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house and tarry all night and wash your feet and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways and they said nay but we will abide in the street all night Lord had been taught you know how to be hospitable by Abraham and that thing that splashed on Lord that by Abraham's life he, he still he still observed that and that is why he said you ain't he didn't know they were he just he thought they were men coming to me and then I'll take care of you and he, pre he pressed upon them in verse 3 greatly and they turned in unto him and entered into his house and he made them a feast and did bake on living bread and they did eat he ate with angels he ate with angels something is coming your way i said something is coming your way you're going to eat with angels in jesus name this thing that never happened to a lot before this thing that never happened to something new is going to happen in your experience in verse 4 but before they laid down the men of the city even the men of sodom compassed the house around both old and young and all the people from every quarter and they called unto lord and said unto him where at the men which came in to thee this night bring them out unto us that we may know them that we may know them and those who are the sodomites those who are the men misusing men and those who are the people that do not have any respect between the DB for the demarcation between men and women there were men wanting to have the moral intercourse immoral a kind of a relationship with the men want to know them that's where we get the word sodomite man and man and now they are even trying to get married together woman and woman they're even trying to get married together and what an abomination come on and look at verse 6 and Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Sodomy is wickedness. It's a wicked sin. It's a wicked sin. And when a man and another man are they doing that kind of thing together, when a lady and another lady, lesbianism, is a great wickedness. It goes on, behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And do ye to them as, uh, as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under, my sh under the shadow of my room. He was even willing to sacrifice his family so that this great wickedness will not be co committed. And they said, stand back. And he said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn and he will needs be a judge. He wants to change our pattern of life. He wants to change our sodomite lifestyle. He wants to change all that we're doing, our wickedness and violence. This man came in, he wants to direct us and instruct us and judge us and teach us and make us to repent. We will not. And he said, now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed so upon the man, even Lord, and came near to break the door. And the men, that is the angels, put forth their hand and they pulled Lord into the house to them and shot and shut to the door and 
they smote the men that were at the door, the Sodomites of the, or at the door of the house were blinders, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. After the judgment of blindness had, had come upon them, they were still looking for the door. They still wanted to commit sin. You see, the, the passion was in them. It's like, you know, if they didn't commit that sin, they will not be able to rest. And even though the judgment of blindness had come to them, these Sodomites, they were still searching for the door so they can lay hold on those men and commit immorality with them. It goes on to verse 12, and the men said unto the Lord, Hast thou here any besides son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters, and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place. Because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord has sent to us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, oh, Get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy the city. But it seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. And when the morning arose, there would then the angels hasting Lot, saying, Arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters, which are here, lest thou be consumed in the iniquity of this of the city. And while he lingered, while he lingered, while he lingered, you see, his mind was in Sodom, his properties were in Sodom, his servants were in Sodom, his hearts were in Sodom, his riches were in Sodom, his wealth was in Sodom, his heart, everything he had was in Sodom. He had he had no other place he was looking for. It was not like Abraham that had another city he was looking for. A city that he said that has foundation not built by man. But this man, everything he had, his hope, his desires, his, his pleasure, everything was in Sodom. Because of that, he lingered. And while he lingered, the men laid hold on his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of, the, of his two daughters. And the Lord being merciful unto him, and they brought him him forth and set him without the city and it came to pass when they had brought them forth that he said escape for thy life not look not behind thee neither stay thou in all the plain escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed the Lord wanted them to escape from Sodom and he wants us to escape from Sodom you will escape I said you will escape Oh, you say, but that is Sodom, that is Gomorrah. What concerns me with Sodom and Gomorrah? I want you to look at Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 9. There are many cities today like Sodom. There are many nations today like Sodom. There are many communities today like Sodom. And if your community is like Sodom, the Lord is telling you, don't get involved in the sins of Sodom, in the Sodomy, in the, in the activities and the actions of those Sodomites. It's saying, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9, except the Lord of hosts has left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom, and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. Hear, hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom, and give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose a multitude of your sacrifices unto me, says the Lord. I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of the bulls or of the lambs or of the goats. When ye come to before me to appear before for me who has who has acquired this at your hand to tread my cup bring no more vain oblation incenses and abomination unto me the new moons and the sabbaths and the and the calling of assembly i cannot away with it is iniquity even the solemn meetings see these the religious people god said but you are just like sodom you're just like Sodom. Immorality of Sodom is inside there. The fornication of Sodom is inside there. The adultery of Sodom is inside there. And the lesbianism of Sodom is still inside there. And all the men and men walking that together, it's inside there. You're like Sodom. And it says all the solemn feasts and all the incense and all the Sabbaths and all the worship, it weighs with everything. That's why the Lord is saying, if you're in such a community today where they just practice that and uh, they don't have any qualm, they don't have any kind of conscience, and they don't have any kind of resistance into it. The Lord is saying, escape, escape. You are escaping today in Jesus' name. In verse 14, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hated, they are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, 
when ye make many prayers, I will not hear your hands are full of blood. These are the people committing abortion. Their hands are full of blood. And it is part of the sins of Sodom. And the Lord is saying, all the convention you have, all the convocation you have, all the camp meeting you have, all the retreats you have, if you still have all that in your hand and you have not escaped out of Sodom, I do not accept all that kind of worship. And that's what he says, wash you in verse 16, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doing from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well. Seek judgment and relieve the oppressed and judge the fatherless and plead for the widows. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as well if ye be willing and obedient. If ye be willing and obedient, any willing person there. If ye be willing and obedient, any obedient person there. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, if you refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. We're going to escape. I said, We're going to escape. Jeremiah chapter 23, Jeremiah chapter 23, our glorious escape from Sodom. Jeremiah chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 23, we're looking at verse 14. It says in verse 14, I have seen also, I have seen also, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem and horrible sin, they commit adultery and they walk in lies and they strengthen also the hands of the evildoers that none do none does return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom. They are all unto me as Sodom. They are all unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. It's talking about Jerusalem. It's talking about the prophets. It's talking about the preachers. It's talking about the ministers. It's talking about the leavers. It's talking about the priesthood. And it's saying that even all these people that say they are into religious activity and religious ministry, whatever, and the Lord is saying they are unto me like Sodom, like Gomorrah. And the Lord is saying escape from Gomorrah, escape, escape, escape. We're not going to be like them in Jesus' name. I'm expecting a great amen from over there in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 16, Ezekiel chapter 16. And I'm reading here from verse 49. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49. Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. Pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness was in her and in her daughters. Neither did she strengthen the hands of the poor and needy. It's saying that anywhere you find idleness, it says that Sodom, because the sin of Sodom, they had, a lot, they had a lot of time on their hands. No activity, no work, nothing at all. They just fold their hands from morning till evening. They're only thinking about, you know, about their sodomy. They're only thinking about their immoral life. They're only thinking about the things that are not right because idleness and fullness of bread and then it says uh, they also had pride they will not be corrected they will not uh, repent of their sins and it says they're like Sodom like Gomorrah unto me and we're told in we're told in Jeremiah chapter 51 the Lord is saying we're going to escape and you will escape in Jesus name I said you will escape in Jesus name Jeremiah chapter 51, I'm reading from verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 51, we're looking at verse 6. Verse 6, verse 6 says, flee out of the midst of Babylon. Flee out of the midst of Sodom. Flee out of the midst of those sinful communities and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in iniquity for this. At the time of the lost vengeance, he will rain down to high a recompense. And because judgment is coming, that's why the Lord is saying escape. That's why the Lord is saying come out of that place and come out of that Sodomy. Come out of that immorality. Come out of that evil. Come out of that sin. And when you come out, the way is open already because Jesus died for you and Jesus shed his blood. And because of the shedding of the blood of Jesus, now the gate is open and you can come out. You will come out today. I'm looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. Wherefore, come out from among them. Wherefore, come out from among them. Therefore, come out from among them. Have you made a deal, a covenant with a sodomite? A deal, a covenant with an adulterer? A deal, a covenant with an adulteress? A deal, a covenant with a prostitute? A deal, a covenant with a sinner? A deal of a covenant with a work of iniquity? Come out from among them. 
Indeed, a covenant where the drunk has come out from among them. Indeed, a covenant where the smoke has come out from among them. Indeed, a covenant where the thieves and the rogues and the robbers and all those people come out from among them. And be ye separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you, and I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. The way is open, the way is open, and there's a glorious escape. You will escape in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 18, I'm reading from verses 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 18. Reading from verses 4 and 5. Revelation 18, I'm reading from verse 4. Revelation 18, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, And I had another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. That, that's the Seeing that the Lord was telling Lord through those angels, come out, escape for your life, and look not behind thee. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ said, as it was in the time of Lord, so shall it be at the time when the Son of Man will come back. Look at Luke, Luke chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 28. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lord, they did eat, they drank. They bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, he trained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even though shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed, in that day he which shall be upon the house top and his, his top in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lord's wife. Remember Lord's wife. Remember Lord's wife. Remember Lord's wife. What happened to Lord's wife? Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Genesis chapter 19. Genesis chapter 19. Jesus Christ said, remember Lord's wife. Because when he comes back. That's exactly how it will happen. The people that will not make the escape very quickly and the people that will look back into the things of the world, they will perish with the world, but I will not perish with the world. I said I will not perish with the world. You will not perish with the world in Jesus' name. I'm coming back to Genesis chapter 19 verse 17 again and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad and that he said escape for thy life look not behind thee look not behind thee look not behind thee this is not the time to backslide this is not the time to look to look behind this is not the time to look back into the things of the world and the things were forsaken from the world there's the time to keep on looking on the mountain looking on the hills from whence comment my help this is the time to be looking for the lord jesus christ because he is coming look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. Verse 26, verse 26, but his wife looked back from behind him. His wife looked back from behind him. His wife looked back from behind him, and she became, tell me out loud, tell me that again, shout it out. His wife looked, be, looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. That's what the Lord is saying today. Escape, escape, escape from Sodom. Number two, escape from sickness. Escape from sickness. When those children of Israel came out of Egypt, not only came out of Egypt, all the sickness of Egypt, they came out of that. All the diseases of Egypt, they came out of that. All the demon possession, demon oppression, demon obsession in Egypt they came out of that and as you come out of Sodom you are coming out of their sickness I said you are coming out of their sickness the sickness of Sodom will not be upon you the sickness of Sodom will not be upon your life. You know, there the, are the, the sicknesses that are peculiar to Sodomites. There are sicknesses that are peculiar to all those people that live unclean lives, defined lives, immoral lives. And those diseases, as you are coming out of Sodom, you come out of their sicknesses as well in Jesus' name. I'm looking, I'm looking at Psalm 105, verse 37. Psalm 105, verse 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold. Prosperity is coming your way. I said prosperity is coming your way. He brought them out with silver and gold and there was not one feeble 
person among them, not one feeble person among their tribes. I'm sure you remember that those uh, tribes of the children of Israel, there will be a tabernacle like this, and then some of them will camp in the east, and some in the west, and some in the northern part, and some in the southern part. And you can tell this is where these people are, this is where these people are, this is where these people are. It's like we are here today. You have one hall there, no one fe feeble person in this hall, no one feeble person in this hall. I thought you'll say amen. No one feeble person in this hall, and no one feeble person in that 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 hall, and all those people outside and in the youth section and in the in the children's section, no one feeble person in all their tribes in Jesus' name. When you come out of Sodom, you come out of their calamity. You come out of their pressure. You come out of their oppression. You come out of all the evil and all the consequences of sin because you become free and free indeed. And this is the day of that total freedom in Jesus' name. Uh, look at what God said in Exodus chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 26. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. And said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of those diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians. Why? Because you come out of Egypt, you come out of their sicknesses. You come out of Egypt, you come out of their demon possession. You come out of Egypt, you come out of their affliction. I will not put those this upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord. I am not I was, not I was, I am today. Not I will be, I am today. I am the Lord that healed thee. Thank God you are healed in Jesus' name. I'm looking now at, I'm looking at uh, chapter, uh, chapter 20 of 2 Kings. 2 Kings, 2 Kings, chapter 20. 2 Kings chapter 20, you will know your right, you'll claim that right. I said you will know your right, you'll claim that right. You, all the healing that you ought to have, it is yours this day in Jesus' name. It tells us in 2 Kings chapter 20 verse 1, And in those days was Ezekiah sick unto death, and the prophet Isaiah the son of Amos came unto him, and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. You know, that, that's all people here, and then they go into fear. They say, well, the prophet said, thou shalt die and not live. And there are times that, you know, somebody says a letter to you. In our church, our prophet saw a vision. He said, you have a sister. And when he described that sister, I knew he was talking about you. And he said, tell that person that I have the vision that that fellow will die. That fellow will die. And then, the, you know, your sister that wrote the letter said, is there any kind of a possibility that she will leave only one possibility she will leave her church where she is over there and then will come over here and burn candle and burn incense and stay here that's the only way she can escape that death that's a lying devil i said that's a lying devil i will not die i said i will not die i will live to declare the glory of god in jesus name you know, some people, they don't, they're not going to panic and fear. They'll be sweating. They said, a prophet said, I'm going to die. But Jesus said, you are not going to die. The Father said, you are not going to die. The Holy Ghost said, you are not going to die. The unchanging eternal word of God said, you are not going to die. Look at verse 2. And then he turned his face to the wall. And he prayed unto God, unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiah wept so, and it came to pass her fall. Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying turn again, turn again, turn again and tell Ezekiah the captain of my people thus says the Lord, the God of David, thy father I have heard thy prayer I have heard thy prayer I have heard thy prayer. God has heard your prayer in Jesus' name. And that negative prophecy against your life and that negative dream against your life and that negative feeling you are having, all that is reversed and canceled in Jesus' name. 
I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy cheers. Behold, I will heal thee. I will heal thee. I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will arch unto thy days. And I will arch unto thy days. And I will arch unto thy days. 15 years and a lot can be done in 15 years a lot can be done in 15 years a lot you can do in 15 years think about in 15 years six years even if you had not even gone to primary school six years take six years out to finish primary school take another six years to finish your secondary school and take another three years you can you can find a degree a new degree even if you are stuck illiterate 15 years in 15 years you can have a child in 15 years you can get married in 15 years you can build a house in 15 years you can start a ministry in 15 years a lot can be done and the lord said i give you extra time so that you'll be able to do extra thing in your life that extra is coming today i said that extra is coming today it is not time to die yet it is time to live i said it is time to live and you will live a prosperous life, a useful life, a profitable life, a spiritual life, a supernatural life in Jesus' name. And that's what the Lord is telling us that he might be able. Look at the condition here now. In 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will hear from heaven this day. The Lord will hear from heaven in Jesus' name. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. In First John chapter three, First John chapter three, First John chapter three, we're looking at verse eight. First John chapter three, we're looking at verse eight. In First John chapter three, verse eight, he that committed sin is of deeper life tell me he that committed sin is of the devil for the devil sinned from the beginning for this purpose the son of God for this purpose the son of God he came to this world for this purpose the son of God he was born of virgin Mary why for this purpose the son of God he lived a perfect life a righteous life for this purpose the son of God he died on the cross of Calvary for this purpose the son of God for this purpose he rose from the dead on the third day for this purpose the son of God God for this purpose. That's the purpose he came. That's the purpose he lived. That's the purpose he preached. That's the purpose he ministered. That's the purpose he died on the cross. This is the purpose for which he rose from the dead. He says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might, that he might, that he might destroy the works of the devil. This is the day. The works of the devil in your life, in your soul, in your spirit, in your head, in your mind, in your family, they'll be destroyed in Jesus' name. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. This day you escape, you escape from, you escape from all the sicknesses that Satan and Sodom have brought upon your life in Jesus' name. Look, look at this, look at this now. We're coming to 1 John chapter 5 verse 18. 1 John chapter 5 and we're looking at verse 18. We know, we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, I will not sin. I said, I will not sin. He said, for we know that whosoever is born of God does not sin. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, keepeth himself, keepeth himself. And that wicked one toucheth him not. That wicked one toucheth him not. That wicked one toucheth him not. He will not touch you again. I said, he will not touch you again. The sicknesses will not touch you in Jesus' name. The afflictions will not touch you in Jesus' name. All those diseases of Egypt will not touch you in Jesus' name. All the demons that are flying around, all the demons that are knocking at doors, none of those demons will touch you in Jesus' name. And all the curse and all the yoke and all the sin they are throwing in the bush, in the river, whatever it is, all the mummy water spirit, they will not touch your life anymore in Jesus' name. And you know, your pregnancy, the world will not touch you. 
your business, the world will not touch you. And all the good things you have, none of the powers of darkness and the world will be able to touch you anymore in Jesus' name. Number one, number one, number one, our glorious escape from Sodom. Number two, our great escape from sickness. Number three, our gracious escape from Satan. Our gracious escape from Satan. Our gracious escape from Satan. Tell me, when you escape Sodom, escape sickness, escape Satan, you are going to glory. The glory of God will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Uh, let, let, let me show you an illustration. Illustration, 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 8. 2 Kings chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 8. Then the king of Syria watched against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God saying, Turn to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for see the, the Syrians are come down. Every secret of the enemy, the Lord will reveal to you. Every plot and every plan of the enemy, the Lord will reveal unto you in Jesus' name. Anywhere, any road they are waiting for you, the Lord will reveal to you. Any corner, any bush, any village they are waiting for you, the Lord will reveal for you to you in Jesus' name. Any trap they try to search, any kind of a snare they try to set, and they say, well, catch her there, well, catch him there, you will escape. I said you will escape. All those traps of the enemy, all those snares of the enemy, all those plans and plots of the enemy will not come against your life in Jesus' name. In verse 10, verse 10, And the king of Israel said to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of, and saved himself there not once, not twice. He escaped not once, not twice. He escaped not once, not twice. And you will escape not once and not twice. Therefore, 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 the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for their sin. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel. He telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and speak spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. Go and spy where he is that I might send and fetch him. Why? 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 Because he didn't have any problem with Elisha, but if I can take Elisha away, I'll be able to crush and be able to conquer the people of Israel. Because Elisha is the one that is revealing the secret of the devil and the secret of the enemy unto the king of Israel. And if I'm going to be able to destroy the king of Israel and destroy the people of Israel, I must take Elisha out of the way. But you cannot take Elisha out of the way. I said you cannot take Elisha out of the way. You cannot touch Elisha. You cannot destroy Elisha. Elisha will remain there as long as his ministry is demanded of the people of God in Jesus' name. Therefore send he, see the horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, and gone forth, behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not. And I tell you, fear not. I tell you there, fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the man, of the young man, and he saw. And I'm praying for you, God will open your eyes. And the Lord will open the eyes of this young man there, this young woman there, and will open the eyes of that member there, will open the eyes of that minister there. You will see something. 
you will see something. Chariots of fire around you. Chariots of horses around you. And greater are the people at those chariots around you than the chariots in the world in Jesus' name. The Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed and said unto the Lord, smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness. He said, open the eyes of my servant. God open the eyes. He said, shut up the sight of these enemies. Your enemies are blinded. Your enemies are blinded. They will not see you again. They will not touch you again. And he smote them with blindness according to the words of Elisha. Come down to verse 23. And he prepared great provision for them. And when they had eaten and drunk, he sent them away. And they went to their master. So the bands of Syria came no more. They came no more. They came no more. They came no more. Each of the land of Israel, we have overcome. I have overcome. I have overcome. First John chapter 4, verse 4. First John chapter 4. We're reading from verse 4. Ye of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The greater one lives on the inside of you. I said, the greater one lives on the inside of you. See, even those prophets of old, the greater one was around them. The chariots were around them. In your own case, around you, beneath you, above you, all around you and inside you, the supernatural presence of the Lord is there. No evil can touch you anymore in Jesus' name. Uh, that's why it tells us in Luke chapter in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. I'm reading there from verse 17. Luke chapter 10. We're looking at verse 17. No power on this earth can hurt you anymore. No demons on this, in this life can hurt you anymore. No Satan, no Satan, and no demonic, no demonic dragon can touch your life anymore in Jesus' name. Luke chapter 10 verse 17 and the 17 returned again with joy. You are going back home when we finish this program. You are going back home with joy. Joy beaming from your eyes and joy beaming from your face and joy oozing out from your life. The joy of victory. The joy of conquering and the joy of seeing Satan defeated and the joy of seeing all sicknesses vanishing from your life and the cemetery return with joy saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And then he says, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. This very day, that satanic part that is trying to trouble your life, torment your life, will fall in Jesus' name. And in verse 19, behold, I give unto you power. Thank God I have something. You know, when the people of the world, if Satan gives them sickness, they have the sickness. If Satan gives them any kind of calamity, they have the calamity. If Satan, their master, their Lord, gives them poverty, they have the poverty. Now, if Satan gives them something they have, when my own Savior gives me something, I have that thing. I said I have that thing. I said I have that thing. That's why I said, behold, I give unto you power. What do you have today? I said, what do you have today? Power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. I'm looking at Romans chapter 16, Romans chapter 16, verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You have escaped in Jesus' name. The Lord has set you free in Jesus' name. Psalm 124, Psalm 124, Psalm 124, Psalm 124, I'm reading from verse 1. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, 
God is on our side. When you came to the Lord Jesus Christ, you came to the Lord's side, and God is on your side. If it had not been the Lord is on our side, may Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, then the waters had overwhelmed us, and the stream had gone over our soul. Then the, the proud waters would have gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, who has not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped. My soul is escaped. My soul is escaped. My soul is escaped. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Where are you? The snare is broken and we are escaped. The snare is broken and we are escaped. The gate is open and we are escaped. And Satan is paralyzed and we are escaped. And all the enemies are paralyzed and we are escaped. Jump up, jump up, jump up. We are escaped. We escaped, we escaped, we escaped. And then you can trust Satan under your feet. No sickness, no calamity, no demon, no disease, no poverty, and all those works of the devil, they are cancelled in Jesus' name. Open your mouth, open your mouth and tell the Lord the snare is broken. The snare is broken. The gates are open and all those and all those fetters, they are broken and they are destroyed and we are escaped. We are escaped. You will not be bound anymore. You will not be bound anymore. He has set you free. 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 He has broken the chains. He has broken the fetters. All the sicknesses are gone. The snare is broken. The trap is broken. All the snares are broken. All the prison doors are open. And we are escaped. You have escaped. You have escaped. You will not be bound anymore. You are not a man of Sodom. You are not a woman of Sodom. You are not for sickness. You are not for Satan. You are not for evil spirit. You are not for any secret society. The snare is broken and you have escaped. The snare is broken and you have escaped. The snare is broken and you have escaped. You don't belong to Satan. You don't belong to Sodom. You don't belong to evil spirit. You don't belong to any calamity. The snare, the snare is broken. The snare is broken. The snare is broken. The snare is broken. And you have escaped because of Jesus Christ, because of Calvary, because of that crucifixion, because of what he did on the cross of Calvary. Praise the Lord, I am free. Praise the Lord, I am free. Praise the Lord, I am free. Any sin that bound you before, drunkenness, get out of that you have escaped all the smoking get out of that all the sodomy get out of that all the lesbianism get out of that all the adultery all the fornication get out of that all the secret calls get out of that all the things of the devil coming out of sodom all the fighting all the violence everything of the devil all the occultism get out of that the snare is broken the snare is broken the snare is broken. The snare is broken. All those bad habits, the snare is broken. All those works of the devil, the snare is broken. For this purpose, the Son of God was, was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. For this purpose, for this purpose, the purpose of setting you free, the purpose of delivering you, and the purpose of making you come out of that. That's why the snare has been broken. The snare has been broken, and you are free. And you are free, and you are free, and you are free. If the Son of Man, if the Son of God shall set you free, ye shall be free indeed. You can tell the Lord, I am free. You can tell the Lord, I am free. You can tell the Lord, I am free. You can tell the Lord, I'm, I'm free from Sodom. I'm free from sin. I'm free from sickness. I'm free from evil spirit. I'm free from the attack and the affliction of Satan. I am free. I'm free from their secret cult. I'm free from any gang. I'm free from any occult gang, any occult group. I am free. He set you free. He set you free. He set you free. He broke the bonds of Satan and the bonds of death and premature death. He broke everything. And you can say, praise the Lord. I am free. All the bad habits, I am free. All the evil things, I am free. 
all the yoke of the devil, I'm free. All the imprisonment, confinement of the devil, I am free. All the fear, I am free. All the bondage, I am free. Tell the Lord, you're free in your head. You're free in your mind. You're free in your brain. You're free in your spirit. You're free in your family. You're free. You're free, free, and free indeed. You're free in the dream. You're free in the day. You're free in the, on the job. You're free in the office. You're free in the church, and you're free at home. You're free on the bus, and you're free on the street. The Lord has set you free. The Lord has set you free. The Lord has set you free. And then he put the key in your hand. He put the key in your Lock that door. Lock that door. Lock that door. And don't come back there anymore. Don't go there anymore. Because the Lord Jesus himself has set you free. The Lord Jesus himself has set you free. No sickness can remain there. He has set you free. No calamity can remain there. He has set you free. No oppression can remain there. He has set you free. No weakness, weakness of character, weakness of character can remain there. He has set you free. No fear, no timidity, no bondage of fear, panic can remain there. He has set you free. Come out, come out, come out, come out of all that calamity. I am free. I am free. I am free. You are free. I am free indeed. Why don't you tell the Lord, you'll not go back into bondage. You'll not go back onto Sodom. You'll not go back onto all those Sodomites. You'll not go back into all those evil things anymore in your life. You're free. Anything binding you with a Sodomite, break that cord right now and escape. Anything binding you to an adulterer, break that cord right now, you are free. Any, anything binding you to an adulteress, break that cord right now, you are free. Anything binding you to drunkenness, break that cord right now, you are free. Anything binding you to those hard drugs, cocaine, or whatever it is, break that cord right now, you are free. Anything binding you, any covenant binding you to any secret cult, break that cord right now, you are free. He has set you 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 free. You're free and free indeed. You're free and free indeed. You're free and free indeed. There's nothing to fear in your life. There's no panic. You don't fear Sodom. You don't fear the Sodomites. You don't fear Satan. You don't fear the evil spirits. You don't fear the occultic people because greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater, greater. The greater one lives on the inside of you. The greater one, the greater one lives on the inside of you. The greater one, the greater one lives on the inside of you. And you're free and free indeed. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. Above you, you have the wings of the Almighty. And you can say, praise the Lord, I am free. Praise the Lord, I am free. Praise the Lord, I am free. All the sicknesses of Egypt are taken away. The bondage of Syria taken away. He set me free. He set me free. He set me free. He set me free. Now you have the joy of salvation, the joy of deliverance, the joy of dominion, the joy of triumph, the joy of victory, and escape, a glorious escape, a glorious escape, a glorious escape, a glorious escape. You are free. Confirm that deliverance. Confess that deliverance. Let the world know you're free. Speak it. Say it aloud. Let your spirit get the message. You're free. 
Let your mind get the message. You're free. Let your thoughts think it over, roll it over in your mind. You're free. Let the world know that you're free. Let those calls know you're free. Let the powers that be know that you're free. The snare is broken. The snare is broken. The snare is broken. And we have escaped. The snare is broken. And you have escaped. Never to come into bondage anymore. Never, 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 never to come into bondage anymore. You're free. Your wife is free. Your husband is free. Your children are free. The members of the local church are free. Free. And free indeed. Free and free indeed. 100% freedom. Total freedom. Complete freedom. Permanent freedom. Perpetual freedom. Lifetime freedom. Free and free indeed. Free today and free tomorrow. Free this week and free next week. Free this month and free next month. Free this year and free next year. Free all the days of your life. Proclaim your freedom. Announce your freedom. Declare your freedom. Enjoy your freedom. Calvary broke the yoke. Calvary destroyed the works of the devil. Calvary set you free. Calvary did it. He paid it all. He paid it all. He paid it all. He's paid the price for your freedom. He's broken the head of the enemy. And now you can trample on him. Now you can trample on him. Now you can trample on him. Set you free. He set you free. He has set you free. In Jesus' name we pray. If you are free from Sodom, in Jesus' name we pray. If you are free from sickness, in Jesus' name we pray. If you are free from Satan, in Jesus' name we pray. I am free. I am free. I am free. What are you? Let the world hear. Let the devil hear. Let Satan hear. Let your neighbors hear. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today. You have broken every yoke. You have destroyed the works of the devil. You have set us free. Lord, we proclaim it. We declare it on mountaintop. We are free in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray every person here that has decided to come out of Sodom, lock the door of Sodom behind them in Jesus' name. That, Lord, I pray, everyone that has confessed unto you, everyone that has come away, everyone that has come unto the Lord Jesus Christ by faith, I pray the joy of salvation will come to them. The joy of restoration will come to them. And the joy of a clean life and the joy of justification will come to them in Jesus' name. And I pray that the sins of Sodom will never have any power over their lives anymore in Jesus' name. Sodomy will not catch them anymore. Lesbianism will not catch them anymore. Adultery will not catch them anymore. Fornication will not catch them anymore. Drunkenness will not catch them anymore. Smoking will not catch them anymore. 
had drugs, cocaine will not catch them anymore. And I pray that all the violence and the fighting of, of Sodom will not come upon them anymore. In Jesus' name. A new lie. A transformed lie. A transparent lie. A victorious lie. A triumphant lie. Grant unto everyone in Jesus' name. And Lord, oh Lord, we pray every sickness of Sodom, every sickness of Egypt, every sickness of, of Syria, I command all those sicknesses now, come out in Jesus' name. Perennial sickness, day-to-day -day sickness, perpetual this sickness, the sickness coming and going, I command all the sicknesses, come out in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray, brain problem insanity. That brain problem, lunatic, I command you, be healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray all that de de demonic oppression, epilepsy, you have no right to be there. The people of God are free right now. Spirit of epilepsy, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. And Lord, any physical sickness in the bone, in the body, in their belly, anywhere, I command that sickness, that pain now, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray your people be totally free from Satan. Lord, you said, I give unto your power. I give unto your power. I give unto your power. We will receive that power right now in Jesus' name. Power to train on serpents and scorpions. Power over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing, nothing, nothing shall by enemies hurt any of us anymore. In Jesus' name. You said we keep ourselves and Satan will not touch us anymore. And I pray for everyone, every child, every boy, every girl, every youth, every student, every father, every mother, every worker, every minister, every, everyone here. I pray, oh Lord, that torch of Satan, I cut off the hand of Satan away from them in Jesus' name. And I pray, Lord, from the top of your head to the tip of your toe, be healed in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe, you are delivered in Jesus' name. I pronounce authority in your life, dominion in your life, power in your life, courage in your life, freedom in your life, prosperity in your life. The past is gone. A new day has begun for you right now. Move from success to success, from prosperity to prosperity, from joy to joy, from triumph unto triumph from faith unto faith and from grace unto grace oh lord i pray everyone here everyone here everyone here you'll be more than conquerors in jesus name confirm it to lord in every life i thank you because i know you have answered i thank you lord because i know you have answered in jesus name we pray he has set me free i cannot be bound Jesus set me free I cannot be bound Jesus set me free I will not be bound how about you